All right, it's been uh, it's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, I really have not been doing that much this summer. Uh, I kind of pulled the plug in July, and the whole idea was to take the summer off and put a bunch of miles on. We were going to travel all over the country and really take advantage of uh, our trike, one of the trikes. Uh, a lot of things happened though. You know, we had the the pandemic broke out, the global pandemic, which kind of wrecked travel in general. So we've been kind of hunkered down and, uh, you know, doing the, the things we're supposed to be doing. And uh, in, in the meantime, I decided to catch my house on fire and burn that to the ground. And I lost my uh, 2003 Goldwing and uh, my new electric bike that I had designed and patented. And uh, so that turned out to be not such a good thing. So the 2003 is gone, and I really liked that bike. It was really decked out nicely. Uh, I picked this one up at uh, Insurance Auction, where, where I buy quite a few bikes. And uh, this one was a salvage certificate, which means the insurance company deemed it a complete loss. And uh, I have to actually get this one inspected in order to get a title on it, which is no big deal. What's nice about it is because I am listed not only as a dealer, but I'm also a, a salvage recycler. This was not available for auction for anybody but salvage recyclers. So I only had two or three people I was bidding against. Uh, so I picked this one up fairly cheap. Uh, it's got electric, uh, it's got heated grips, heated seat. It's nappy, ABS, the whole shoot and match. Uh, 31,000 miles on it runs really good. I put a new battery in it and she fired right up. It runs just great. So uh, it's looking pretty good. It's got some damage here as you can see. Mirror broken off. There's some road rash right here. Uh, I believe this one hit a deer or some sort of soft animal. And the reason I put it that way is because typically if you hit a car or uh, you know something solid, there's a lot of damage that'll be quite evident. Uh, things we shattered and bent and all that. This is, it got hit right here. It pushed the headlight in about an inch. It uh, deformed the garnish here, which is just loose right now. It deformed this, I'm gonna replace this piece. The bottom piece here I have to replace. The fender is broken, which I'll just fling. Uh, and there's a broken foot peg, this highway peg got broken. I think what actually happened is it, I'm guessing hit a deer and then the bike dropped to this side and it sheared off uh, a couple things there. But there's some scratches on the trunk, on the uh, saddlebag there, which we can fix that. We can fix this just fine. I'm gonna replace the windshield and uh, it's got one of these uh, fork brace nonsense things on there. So that's gonna get probably thrown on eBay. People buy these, I don't know why. Uh, I guess they feel they actually do something. Uh, and you know, it's a good bike. It's a good bike. I like, kind of like the color, but it needs to be, you know, trimmed up a little bit. So I'm going to add some chrome to it. I've got lighting sets for the saddlebags and the trunk. And, uh, maybe I'll do some, uh, either custom paint or some pinstripe. We'll see as it goes along here. So this is going to be my new ride. And, uh, I'm going to do this one and maybe one more for myself. So I have a couple. I might use this as my uh, my demo for people when they come to test drive, and then I'll, I'm looking to buy a 2015, the 40 year anniversary model, and I'd like to build one of those for myself. But I've got another gold one I'm going to pick up tomorrow, so I'm going to actually do mine and the customers at the same time, and then I think I have uh, another gold wing, two gold wings after that, and two Harleys, and then in spring I'm going to pull the plug again and hopefully. Uh, things will be leveled out a little bit and uh, everything we kind of working its way back to normal and we can enjoy the summer. Uh, I am going to replace these things. I really don't like this style where they went with this solid chrome instead of the vented. Uh, at the very least I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint part of this or something. Uh, I just don't like the look of that. I like the old ones where it had the kind of the vented looking thing. So I'm going to see if I can find those. They're hard to come by. 
And uh, like I said, I'm going to replace the windshield because it's already got, it's fogging like they all do in time. So I'm going to put a new windshield on there. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be a good bike. I like the heated seat idea because I would like to drive, like today it's 30 degrees. I could take this out and drive it uh, if it was, you know, in working condition, which it will be in short order. So that's the agenda. And that's what we got going. And uh, starting Monday, I'm back at it full time. And we'll see uh, how many videos I can do, and what, uh, what's new and upcoming. And maybe I'll do some updates on, on my uh, French fry home, which is being rebuilt right now. And uh, I've got some pictures uh, of the damage done to the, the two bikes that burned. So that's life in the big city. Well, things are progressing pretty good here. It's Thursday, October 22nd. <clears throat> I've been working on this for just a couple days now, three days, I guess. And uh, I've got, as you can see, I've got the front end all torn apart. I had to pull the ABS motors out of there, clipped all the brake lines. Uh, I run all new brake lines, so the old ones just get cut off. And as you can see, I put in uh, the junctions here uh, for the third radiator. And I've got the lower uh, mount started, and it's actually looking pretty good. I put LED headlights in. That was kind of a trick, but I got those in okay. And uh, as you can see, things are shaping up pretty good. Uh, I got the crash bar on the back there, a brand new one put in place. And uh, I got a foot peg coming. I think it was actually delivered today. Uh, I did pull the shelter off and uh, check the filter. The air filter is brand new. Oil looks good. The bike mechanically was maintained pretty well from what I can tell, but uh, cosmetically it wasn't. Uh, I think it sat in the salvage yard for a year. So it got snowed on and a lot of dust and dirt and the whole bike is just caked with uh, dirt. So it needs a good cleanup, but it's looking pretty good. And uh, as you can see, it's got some extra chrome and stuff. Uh, Got a roll of paper up there just in, thing, in case things go totally to uh, a bad place. No, actually, I ran out here, so I had to f f do a little fulfillment. Uh, I've got my, my tubes cut, the fork tubes, and they're in place, ready for the steering assembly. And uh, it's, this is actually kind of some of the more putsy type of work. Tomorrow I'm going to build the subframe, the adapter frame. And I should have the frame together on this one, you know, pretty quick. I've got uh, two other bikes coming in, two Hondas. So that's, that one's going, those are going on the other rack, and I'm going to get, uh, you know, two of them going here right away. So uh, progress is doing pretty well. I do have a new piece for, uh, for here. Uh, color isn't quite right. Close, I mean, you can just barely tell. Uh, so that's gonna get painted to match. Uh, nice little piece I got on eBay, not a scratch on it, so that's real good. And I got a new, uh, you know, top cover here, uh, windshield garnish, and I don't know what color that's gonna be. Doesn't matter, that all gets painted. So, uh, looking good. So we'll continue tomorrow. Okay, the bike's coming along really good. I've got the adapter frame on. I built two adapter frames, and I'm uh, doubling, up, doubling up all the parts because I've got another gold wing coming in, and uh, as soon as I get this one assembled, I'll put that one together too. Uh, I've got the windshield on. I've got the mirrors on. I went with black mirrors. These are pretty neat. They've got kind of a horseshoe light there. Uh, the flashes are really bright, so that's gonna be nice. I'm gonna do the engine. Uh, valve covers in uh, black. I'm going to powder coat those and leave the center part silver. I think that's going to look pretty good. But uh, she's moving right along. I've got some more parts coming, but uh, I think she'll be uh, ready for the paint shop here in another week or so, and we'll, uh, we'll see how she uh, pans out after that. Now one thing I'm doing here that's a little bit different 
Um, I don't like these. In uh, 2006, they went with this plain silver uh, extension to the headlight here, this extension trim. I don't like that. So I went and grabbed uh, a couple vents from a, uh, I think these are from a 2001. And I'm going to do those instead. I, I just don't like these other things. I think I'm going to fling them. If you buy those from the factory, they're $145 each. Anywhere from $145 to $159, depending on where you buy them. You can get them on eBay for about $17, $18. Yeah, it's amazing. So I'm going to do the other side as soon as that one shows up. And uh, maybe one of these days I should get the colors to blend a little bit better. Okay, made some modest progress today. Uh, I managed to get the uh, the front end pretty much assembled. I've got the steering to put in and the wheels and that kind of thing. A couple days left on that. I'm hoping to have this into the paint shop next Friday. Uh, I've got another bike coming in tomorrow. So I'm actually building parts for that one as I'm doing this one. Uh, I pulled the uh, valve covers off and uh, powder coated them black which I think uh, is going to blend in pretty nice. I've got the black mirrors, now I've got a little bit of black there. I've got a foot peg that's coming in and the bracket for it I'm going to powder coat black. Um, and I stuck a luggage rack on here, mainly for cosmetic purposes. Uh, so that kind of dresses up the rear of the bike a little bit. Uh, one thing I do on all of these, uh, which I think is a real pain, if you don't have the trunk closed, your dash tells you the trunk's not closed, and pretty much nothing works, uh, I disable that part. Because if the trunk isn't all the way closed, it's no big deal, you hit a bump and it automatically closes. And it's not gonna fly open, so. Um, there's a couple little um, micro switches in there. What you do is you just reach in there with a screwdriver and you break the tab off the top of them so that it can't push the micro switch down. Pretty easy fix, I mean, it takes like one minute to do it. Uh, I did add some extra little chrome pieces and I've got uh, this side trim here, which is coming, that's going to be chrome. And uh, I think by the time I get it all put together, she's going to be uh, pretty, pretty nice. The fenders I'm going to do, uh, the maroon or dark red. I guess it's kind of a kind of a burgundy wine red. I'm going to do a, a red and black theme on the front. So that's going to be kind of cool. I've got uh, another little piece here that goes under here. And it's got lights in it. They were red, which uh, we can't have red lights in the front of a vehicle. Most states won't let you put red, so I ended up pulling the uh, the lights out of there and I put yellow ones in. So uh, that'll make it legal. And as you can see, the third radiator is in. And I went with a uh, uh, a little bit bigger fan. I went with a nine-inch fan versus uh, the eight-inch fans. Uh, simply because they were, uh, I just managed to get a deal on them. Doesn't make any difference really. It's gonna, one thing I kind of like about it is you can see the fan kind of protrudes below the radiator, so it's gonna actually uh, uh, add a, do a little blend on the back of the, of the uh, fan, which I think will, you know, prevent raising the temperature at the front of the engine there. So that might actually work out to be a pretty good deal. I've got some chrome inserts to go in here. So I'm trying to kind of do some accents on there. I did get this extra little vent piece up here. Uh, these are actually off a of pre-2005. Uh, I like the looks of that a lot better than the, uh, the flat chrome little cheapy jobber they throw in there. So I think that's gonna look kind of nice. I do have a little crack here I gotta fix and some scratches, but we'll get this thing all cleaned up. I think it's gonna be a really nice bike when we get her all done. Well, this is a classic uh, takes one step forward and 12 steps backwards. I had this thing ready yesterday for a test drive. Uh, brakes, everything's all done. And I went to fill up the radiator and the fan kicked in and immediately burned a hole in the radiator. Evidently when it got hit, it pushed the radiator up against the fan and it ran for maybe 10 seconds and uh, antifreeze started squirting out. So I've got the, uh, you can see where it wore through there, right on this end here. Um, so I got the radiator out. It, it looks worse than it is. It, this actually took about a half an hour to get this all stripped down. 
Uh, these gold wings are so easy to work on. So I've got a radiator on order. I should have this um, probably Monday. Next Monday I should have that. I had some broken pieces, so uh, I went ahead and glued them together. I, uh, I've got quite a few over here that needed to be fixed. The tabs are broken and different things, so uh, it's kind of nice to get it apart and uh, fix this stuff anyway. So I've got a new headlight on order. This one's scratched and the tabs are all broken. So uh, you can see where the lens is damaged. So I bought a new headlight for it too. So this one's turning out to be a little more than I wanted to get into. Uh, it's really unfortunate because I paid more for this than I paid for my uh, black 2003. And that one just required mirrors. This one required quite a bit more, but when it's all done, it's still going to be a really good bike. Uh, yesterday was one of those days where nothing worked. I started the thing up and oil started spraying out from underneath the uh, uh, valve cover. Evidently, when I put it together, on the other side here, the, uh, the gasket wasn't. It slipped out on the bottom, so I lost about a half a quart of oil right away. That's all over the floor there. So that was number one, got that fixed pretty pretty quickly. And then uh, filled up the radiator, got that all going. And then she sprung a leak there. So that was where I threw my hands up and went home. <laughs> so uh, today was much better. Today is a good day. Everything's working and uh, parts are on order. And this is gonna be real easy to put together. Uh, pulling out the radiator actually was pretty easy. It wasn't bad at all. I, I Like I say, it took about a half an hour. So, uh, you know, it worked out pretty good. So, next week, hopefully I'll get this guy put together. I'm running some parts over to the painter to, uh, to get the fairing pieces painted and all that. I've got the ideas on the paint scheme on that one, on this one. So, um, we're going to get started on that. In the meantime, I've got this guy here, which I'm going to start tearing that one down tomorrow and building a frame for it. I'm actually going to double up everything because I've got another gold wing coming in. So as I build parts of this one, I'm going to build double everything. So uh, we'll get this guy going. All right, today's Friday and uh, I did get a radiator in today and I got it hooked up and got all the coolant back in there, gave it a test run, it works just great. Uh, in the last video I mentioned the fan rubbed against here and you can see it just barely rubbed against here, but all these fins right here have tiny little pinholes in them. Uh, these things are extremely thin, so it doesn't take much. The fan probably rubbed on there for about 20 seconds and that's all it took. And if you notice, the radiator's a different size. They're the same length, the fittings are all the same, but this one is an inch shorter than this one. In 2005 or six, I think in 2006, they made a change. They increased the size of the uh, radiators, which really didn't add a lot of cooling. Because the issue is not the radiator square inch surface area. The problem is the fans in the earlier models are quite a bit smaller. If you look at this, in America, that's a seven inch fan. The ones that are in there are nine inch fans. So the fans are quite a bit bigger. They move a lot more air. And that is really the ticket. The biggest issue with these is uh, because the fans blow the air backwards, it, it draws it in here and it blows it out the front, which is absolutely backwards. And uh, the reason it's done that way is because the fans are uh, generic fans. They're, Honda doesn't make fans. They're just generic fans. You cannot find a fan for any motorcycle that ever blows out through a radiator. It'll always draw through because it's more efficient. And in earlier models, the radiator sat up in the front here and the fans were behind, so it pulled the air through and, and pushed it out the sides, like in the 1500s. And uh, in those cases, the fans work just the way they're supposed to. On these, they pump backwards. So at 20 miles an hour, the fans actually are disabled because they figured the air movement's about 20 miles an hour. If you move at 20 miles an hour, that means no air is moving. So they shut the fans off to allow the air naturally to flow through the, uh, the, the structure and through the fans. Uh, the problem is if you have a tailwind and you're driving 
Uh, I think they actually kick out at 12 miles an hour. I'm not real sure on that. But anyway, if you're driving at a low speed where the fans kick out, but you have a tailwind, no air goes through the radiator. So it doesn't make any difference how big they are. If no air goes through them, it's not gonna make any difference. Um, so they, the main thing is they increase the size of the fans, which increases the airflow, and that partially resolved the issue. They still overheat. I put in the third radiator, which is the same size as this right here. So I'm actually adding an extra 33% to the fan. So I went with, a, with this radiator because you can buy these for about 30 bucks. You can buy these for 150. And uh, in this scenario, it's not gonna make any difference. I've got plenty of cooling. Uh, the fans kick in, they run for about 20 seconds, kick right out. This fan down here, runs a little bit more than these do anyway. So uh, the chance of these even kicking in all is uh, not that uh, often. So anyway, I got the fan in there. Everything's working great. I've got uh, the body parts here being repaired and they're at the painters. Uh, the one side panel is gonna be painted the standard uh, burgundy red. This panel up here and this little nose piece are gonna be uh, a satin black and I'm going to carry that black down the center of the front here and down the center of the fenders you can see I already blacked out the uh, cylinder heads um, so it's going to be kind of a chrome black and burgundy uh, appearance I don't know if that's burgundy or wine red I call it wine red but uh, it's going real good I didn't expect to go and get into all this nonsense but um, you know that's what you, that's a gamble you take when you buy a crashed machine but you know the money you save is well worth it. I'm still uh, eons ahead by doing it uh, on a crash bike. And uh, you know, talking a little bit about that, um, you know, you almost have to be a dealer to buy at, from the insurance auctions. In fact, it's really kind of a mandatory thing. Um, there are bikes that go public auction, but once you get the public involved, they bid crazy on these things. They don't understand how much money they're going to have to stick into them to get them back to a factory spec. And I don't even bid on them. I, I look at, uh, I prefer even if some of them are not even eligible for dealers, they're only eligible for scrappers. And I happen to be, uh, I hold a license for a dealer and a scrapper. So I bid on the scrap bikes. This is a scrap bike. Uh, I, have to, I do have to get this one inspected, uh, which is no big deal. The only thing they look at is the VIN number on the frame and the engine number, and if they match, it passes. Uh, they don't even have to have wheels on them, I don't think. I've never had an inspection where they actually looked at the bike. All they looked at is those two numbers and uh, pretty much wave you right on through. So the inspection process takes about five minutes. Um, there's a lot of hidden damage on this one, which I kind of didn't expect. I had to glue a lot of pieces together because I think he hit a deer, it pushed this headlight in, and it scuffed up the side or broke the mirror off. The bike basically tipped on its side and almost, you know, partially upside down. So it ground into the side here and a saddlebag. And, you know, so that's kind of cosmetic stuff. I can fix that. Uh, it did tweak the front end over about an eighth of an inch. And there's a rather stout brace right here, but it bent this whole thing an eighth inch. You can't tell anywhere on here, except it moved the radiator up against the fan. And uh, that's the only issue. So I did actually shim this out a quarter inch to make sure I have plenty of clearance and we're good to go. So uh, this is a ABS a Navi model. I've talked to, I got a bike that came in yesterday. The guy's got navigation. I asked him if he ever used it and he goes, never. He uses the phone. <laughs> I'm uh, probably planning on doing exactly the same myself. I'll just use my phone instead of using the navigation system. So. Uh, so, I think end of the week, next week, end of next week, I should have this one all put back together where I can uh, continue uh, with the front end build on it. Okay, so I got my parts back from the painter. Uh, the side fairing here, it was really scuffed up in here and gouged pretty badly. He fixed that. 
there was a crack right here and we fixed that there was a crack down here we fixed that and reinforced the whole thing put a brand new headlight in there uh, these are uh, late model vents uh, the current ones are just a flat chrome I like these vented ones better so I got a pair of those put in there put in these chrome pieces down here I might put a chrome piece on here I'm not real sure uh, but the color scheme as you can see is satin black which will be followed down the front of the trike and the fenders and then the, the valve covers are flattened back uh, powder coat and I tossed on some extra chrome there and we still got a little bit of uh, work to do on that back saddle bag there but other than that uh, it's going really good I'm not real sure what to do with the exhaust covers if I should go uh, the red or if I should go flat black on those I guess after I get all the tins on I'll figure that one out uh, everything else looks real good uh, I got an extra key made for it I got a fob coming so uh, for a salvage bike you know it ended up to be a little bit more than I wanted to get into um, I didn't realize how much uh, was involved in the headlight and all that stuff but I tell you what, it took me a good hour to get that one side piece back in there. They're really tough to line up, uh, especially if you don't take off more stuff. I mean, you really have to disassemble the bike, but got her in there. Everything's looking good. So this afternoon, I'm going to start doing the uh, tin work, and we'll see if this week I can get this guy ready for the paint shop. Okay, a couple things happening today. Uh, I finished my bike yesterday, actually, and today I had, to, I had to pull the wheels off and have them balanced, and it's back together. And this one is going to go into storage because it's winter. Uh, I do have some minor little scuff on the back saddlebag there that has to be taken care of, but I'll do that in spring. But she's all done, and uh, it's turned out pretty good. Uh, this was a salvage bike and minor damage um, this headlight was bashed in I had to replace the headlight I, we had to fix this side piece here Harry did a marvelous job he just uh, it had to be patched up here and repainted and it's perfect absolutely perfect and uh, it turned out really good it's got plenty of lighting on it I've got lights under here in this chrome piece I got the edge lighting got the wink lights I got perimeter lighting on the engine so you can see there's plenty of lights I got some under the hood lip there and uh, underneath the headlight there you can see there's some amber lights they were red which is kind of goofy because you can't have red lights on the front got the wink lights which I don't know if you can see they're multicolored you probably can't it's got an orange uh, angel eye with uh, the spot in the center and we did the fenders truck bed liner with chrome stripes on each side and uh, that turned out very nice and Harry didn't uh, usually he clear coats over the truck bed liner on mine he did not so it kept that uh, kind of flat finish which matches the cowling and everything I did there so this bike actually turned out to be uh, burgundy black flat black and chrome I've got a couple strips to put on here uh, they won't arrive until December so uh, you know we'll do those when the time comes it does have a heated seat heated grips uh, which I really like it's got the navigation which maybe I'll use we'll see but uh, other than that she's a done deal I did add uh, as I said in previous videos I added a bunch of stuff I added this luggage rack I added the uh, the lighting on the on the uh, saddlebags and on the trunk added a decal there and uh, you know spruce it up a little bit I didn't want to get too carried away I do have some chrome pieces that go in the tank here and those should arrive in a couple weeks like I said there's some minor stuff that has to go in there uh, I didn't put the crash bars on because I don't use uh, highway pegs I never liked them so I got this hole here that I have to deal with so I got to figure out something to put in there to make it look decent uh, but I didn't put the crash bars on because I just don't really like it on my own bike so uh, for customer bikes I always do though because they usually have highway pegs and most people like highway pegs I just happen to uh, not be in favor of my guess so uh, I did go with the black uh, mirrors 
Uh, I thought about going with chrome, but uh, I decided on the black. So anyway, this one's done. This one here, I'm going to do body panels on it. This one's going to Florida. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of red going on there. I'm going to stripe the back wheel. And uh, he's got some ideas on color scheme. But I just as soon wait till I get the body panels on here before I get into uh, laying out the colors. Uh, I did do an upgrade here though. I bought myself a cabinet and a new welder. This is uh, this is kind of the Swiss Army welder. Uh, this one will do MIG, TIG, and stick. Uh, I probably only use it for MIG because I have a 200 amp TIG welder. I've got a 175 wire feed and another 135 wire feed. I've got a wire feed over there that's a 135. Uh, they're all Eastwoods. I really like the Eastwood welders. I had Miller and I got rid of the Miller and uh, got Eastwoods and I've been really, really happy with these. I actually like them better than the Miller. But this one I just set up today. This is a 200 amp. Uh, I'm going to use this for basically all my production welding. And then the uh, 135 down there, I use that for uh, light sheet metal tacking. The 175, uh, I use that for intermediate stuff. The TIG, I don't use it a lot. Uh, mainly, um, I, I do dry welding uh, of the uh, um, A-arm hinge pins. Uh, I usually weld a, uh, a bolt on the end of them. That's about all I use that for. Uh, but I did do some rewiring here. As you can see, I did a junction down here, uh, 220 junction. And I did find out I had a broken ground because my 175 was uh, not welding like it should. I had to crank the power way up on it. Uh, I normally have it set where it is there, but I had to set the power just about full on in order to get decent welds out of it. Turns out with that broken ground, I think the voltage dropped to something like 208 versus the 230 and uh, made a huge difference. Now it works perfect. I got it all straightened out and did a couple of test runs here and they look good. So um, that's, uh, that's a big deal. So I got five welders now. I should be pretty well settled uh, from the welding standpoint, but uh, I'll be building some frames here. So this is gonna come in real handy. So a little upgrade today. Okay, this is a quick finale video on my, uh, let's see, this is the 2008 uh, GL1800 Goldwing. I have, down below here is a plug below the cover there, the valve cover. That's where the crash bars used to be. I don't like uh, highway pegs myself. Uh, most people put them on, that's fine. Uh, I just don't like them, especially on the Goldwing. I just find it really uncomfortable. I don't use them. So I removed the crash bar that I think it gives you a little bit uh, cleaner look. Uh, personal opinion. Uh, on this one I did go with chrome wheels. They actually aren't chrome. They're uh, artificial chrome. There's a warning that you can't uh, use abrasive powders or anything on them. Uh, I don't know if they're powder or if they're electrostatic. I think it's probably electrostatic coating of some kind. Uh, but they look really good. They look real good. I did powder coat the rear rim uh, in chrome. So we'll see how that holds up. Uh, it's the first time I ever did chrome powder coat. Um, other than that, you know, there was no damage on the bike. There was some, um, some minor scuffing um, down below on the saddlebag here. I actually used truck bed liner on that uh, to fit in with the black on the rest of the bike. And so it was kind of a twofer. I got rid of the scuff marks and uh, I gave it a little accent. Uh, this hat does have the navigation. It's got heated seats, heated grips, uh, pretty much all the bells and whistles. It had ABS, which I got rid of. Uh, it's impossible to use ABS with a trike. Uh, I don't think anybody's figured out how to do it where it actually works. You can turn the light off and disable it and fool it into thinking it's working, but it's basically gone when you trike uh, because the computer's not set up for three wheels. Anyway, this one's going in storage. It's uh, coming up on January 1st here, and we're getting a snowstorm tonight, or well, this afternoon and tonight. So as soon as the roads clear up, I've got a storage area about a mile from here. I'm gonna have to try to drive it over there, and I don't wanna do it today because the roads are ice. So uh, save that for another day.
So in the meantime, this one's gonna probably be pulled out of here, putting my trailer out back here. I got a, another wing I'm bringing in. And I've got this guy here I'm working on. And I'm just working on the body panels. I'll have this guy ready for paint tomorrow. And uh, see if we can get him all done and test driven and shipped out of here. I've got another one of the trailer that's all finished, uh, 2016. And that one's going to Florida. So I've been churning them through here pretty good. Okay, this is pretty cool. Wait for it. There.